So um, we, we've got about 20 minutes. And what I just wanted to do was, first of all, thank you very much for some very thought-provoking um, uh, talks. That we, we, we have here very much um, the platform. We've got the laws. We've got the regulation that, 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 that's applying those laws. And, and we have a little bit of, um, of interpretation about how those then can play out in, in, in opportunities for Guernsey. Um, so I think what, what's very interesting is we had a survey that we asked all the attendees, and, and many of you answered it. And the responses that came back were very much that one of the USPs for Guernsey is its legal platform. And so I just wanted to maybe go a little bit further and tie in with what we started with, which was the change. So we have this existing platform. We've said that we have the capacity to, um, we have the capacity to uh, change that platform slightly if we find the commercial need. We have an example of, of, of the law that you talked about in 2000. Um, and so it was really just to, to maybe address a little bit that change combined with that opportunity for Guernsey um, about let's bring it down to actual detail that, that, that we can do. If, sort of slightly uh, changing my words, um, I guess there's that, what do we do now? What are sort of concrete things that we can do? I don't um, know if you've got any thoughts on that. Yeah, well, it needs to be driven by, um, by the innovations themselves. So people have to come up with ideas and identify needs, which are then, to the extent we need legislative um, changes, that needs to be communicated to those people who make the laws. Um, uh, and there are really very few limitations on what um, laws Guernsey can make. There are some, um, but um, we are, although not quite sovereign, um, autonomous to a very, very high degree indeed. And if there is a need identified, which at a political level um, can be supported, um, there is no reason why we can't legislate in pretty much any way we wish to. <coughs> One of the things that we've sort of seen, sort of tying it slightly on that you answer, is I mean the Isle of Man has gone down that route of choosing specific industries that it wants to to um, to, to sort of focus on, um, and Guernsey has chosen not to do that route. Um, and I just wonder whether, in terms of that 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 concept of change, um, how how you think that plays out? Does that make sense? I think some of this has got to be market-led. Mm. Some of it will, be in, certainly, if the law firms in the room, there'll be more demand from the clients mm -hmm. for information and advice mm. around data. Mm. But uh, some of this does come from the top. I think I put in one of my comments mm -hmm. that this has got to start from a vision. And yes, it might be utopia, but you've got to start from somewhere. You've got to have your eye on the prize. Mm. Um, and these sorts of things, don't underestimate talking mm -hmm. about it and getting these things out there and saying, we mm. have a vision, we have ambition. Mm -hmm. We may not be there yet, mm. um, but you know, we talked about this morning. I've got uh, teenagers in my life, and I want them to aspire to staying and being exciting career uh, prospects. Mm. And I think that's all. It's all linked, isn't mm. it? I, think. I, I suppose I, I get quite practical about this and think, well, what's Guernsey good at? It's good about looking after the affairs of quite well-off people. And if we think about the people who are going to be most aware and most concerned about their data being uh, exploited and so forth, it's probably likely to be those same uh, quite well-off people. And to the extent, in the same way as we've got our image rights legislation, that we can develop the concept of a data trustee to restrict others' access to the data of um, well-off people, then I think that is possibly a, a niche offering which fits very well with a lot of the skills which currently exist on the island. And I always think it's much easier to build off a skill set which you already have and develop it slightly than to try to build one entirely from scratch. So I think there's certainly some potentials there in the wealth management space. Mm. Any thoughts? Uh, well, I would I would say that the whole day we've talking we've been talking about what I would say is kind of two data sets, and mm -hmm. there is the personal data set, and then there is the non-personal data set. And I think you might have put it up in your slide, Emma. Somebody one it was put up recently about the fact that there is the non-personal data, <coughs> and I think that what we've been trying to explore here is also how businesses on the islands can can process and refine that non-personal data in, in a way that, that doesn't harm anybody and that protects anyone's rights if it's anonymized or if it just is machine-to-machine -machine data, in which case it shouldn't actually have any personal information in it either. Uh, but actually, I believe that, that, that GDPR has come at absolutely at the right time for, for data subjects, 
because there is so much data around and because it is a proliferation and we all generate it in everything that we do, in my discussions around GDPR, businesses have, are suddenly being forced to absolutely reconsider and re-engineer, to all intents and purposes, the way they deal with everyone's data because they've either done it lackadaisically or just given it no thought at all. So, perversely, I quite, you know, I think that the that, that GDPR coming in now and the way that we are discussing the way that we should be handling data and we should be using it to commercial advantage, and I see no reason why we can't do, it's, we're, we all run businesses and, and it is a new business asset. Um, I think it's, it's fundamental that businesses revisit how they handle data and deal with it in the way that the GDPR says it should be being dealt with, which is with the view of the data subject in mind. Um, I think probably I'd, I'm going to open it up to the audience, mindful that we've only got about 15 more minutes, if that's all right. Does anybody have any questions in the audience for any of our panelists? More than Stuart. Um, we've heard a lot about ethics as well as some of the, the, the opportunities, certainly in the, uh, in the latter part of the day. And I'm just wondering what the panel's thoughts are about not only seizing the opportunity and allowing the business to lead a direction of travel, but also how we embed a proper ethical debate around the sorts of decisions that we may have over the next 10 years in the broader decision-making process. Is it just down to the regulators and, and, and making sure that our laws are right, or do we need to think a little bit more about how we actually get a proper ethical decision, a bit like the medical profession, when there are decisions that they have to grapple with, um, so that we, we make sure we continue to comply with um, some of the conventions that uh, certainly William Mason was referring to. So thoughts. I, I, just, I, know, Go on. I know it was a bit frivolous, the Hippocratic Oath slide that I had, which had states of Guernsey and then it all got, went bad from then on, <laughs> but the, the principle was there. Why not? I mean, this is the whole point. This is new. So we are forging our own path. So these are the conversations we need to have. And it's about how we differentiate. So we can either wait for everyone else to do something, which, well, that's a great idea. But why not get us all together in a room next time and create the Guernsey Hippocratic Oath for the era of big data? So frivolousness aside, there was a serious point to that because that's exactly the answer. None, no one of us here has the answer to that question. We create the answer. But the fact that you weave that into your political, legal, regulatory, citizen discussions becomes your USP. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I, 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 I like that, but I think that the, the challenge with that is that we're a very small little rock in the middle of the English Channel. And I referred in my talk quite specifically to the politicians of uh, leading countries, because I think uh, there's got to be an international effort on this. I mean, I've seen some of the efforts in the UK in recent weeks to talk about some of the things which the big data providers are doing and how the UK is unhappy with it. And the, the challenge we have is that if we set our standards at a hugely higher level than other people, then nobody will do their data on Guernsey, frankly. They'll go and do it somewhere else. And thus, as an island, we lose prosperity. It's the tightrope we often walk here, that we're very small. And I think at best we can hope to influence an international conversation. If we were to take a firm stand on a gold standard, which wasn't clearly aligned to a commercial opportunity, which is why I sort of said the thing about managing the data for very wealthy people, is that a good commercial opportunity if we do it better than anybody else? Um, there's a danger that people just don't use us as a data repository and thus the appeal of that business goes away. And that certainly is not something I want to see happen. I want to see the island prosperous. But I like the GDPR because it enforces a common standard across the whole of Europe, which at least, at least gives us in a European context a level playing field as well as firm barriers to those who are not equivalent, which at least allows us, I think, without fear of being outcompeted, to um, work to a high standard. No one can clarify that. I'm not talking about gold plating. Yeah. We're talking about bringing in what is required, but mm. just doing it really well. Mm. And also state that's different. In, there's a bit of a statement of intent as well. Yeah. But we're not just all talking about it privately, but it becomes a public... Yeah, and uh, the, and the, you make a USP out of it. And that people trust us as a jurisdiction. Mm. It's not about additional burden, it's mm. about trust. Mm. Well, I was, uh, well, was going to actually kind of reinforce that, that the trust element I think is really quite key. Um, you know, and it comes, as I said in the, in the presentation, it comes off the back of that which 
we already you already do well in mm -hmm. Guernsey. We already do well in the, in the offshore jurisdictions. Is the fact that there is a strong element of trust there in the way that we handle data mm -hmm. that we already have. Um, and so actually I don't think that is a, a potentially a big leap forward. It is just a, probably a codification of it in some respects mm. that I think the GDPR allows us to, to, to no doubt set and there is no reason why we couldn't set some codes of conduct and some codes of practice. I think within industry types, be it insurance, be it fiduciary, be it banking, that, that turns around and says this is how we're going to handle the data. I like, I like it. I think it is good actually. I, I appreciate William's point about the fact that there is this fine tightrope that we always walk. Um, but actually, you know, would we not want to have on this island good business with people who want, you know, who are who, who want to protect the, their good data in a certain, you know, in a, in a I don't mean trite about this, in a good way. We don't we don't like bad financial business right now. So why would we like want bad data business? We we don't want it. Mm. Um, it's bad for the reputation of the island. Any thoughts to add on that? Uh, personally, I don't think there is a, such a thing as a, a system of Guernsey ethics which is clear and distinct from any ethical systems you might find in other parts of what we call the Western world. Um, so our views on ethics and uh, sometimes what people call morality is informed um, by national and supranational organisations, um, in our case in Europe, um, and they are, are remarkably homogenous across the, the territory of Europe and have been since the Peace of Westphalia in the 17th century. Um, so for example, in data protection we take our lead from the European Union uh, and its institutions. In human rights we take our lead from uh, the European Convention. Um, in countering financial crime we take our lead from um, uh, other supranational uh, organisations. And what we do, those values and the principles which are set out by those institutions, by the instruments that they promulgate, filter down to a local level where they are implemented. And they're implemented in a way which is sensitive to the particular territory in which they are implemented, in this case Guernsey. It takes account of our particular circumstances, our particular needs. Um, but what is essential is that the um, <coughs> fundamental rights, obligations, duties, powers that are enshrined at a, at a top level are respected when they are rolled out and implemented in a practical way. Um, at, at the lower level. Um, so I, I don't think we need to have a conversation specific to Guernsey about how we should be looking after people's data or indeed any other interest or property. We need to pay attention and participate in um, wider debates um, uh, at a supranational level uh, and pay attention to and take our lead from those. Thank you. Any other questions out there? Um, so you, were you going to say no, something? Yep. Yeah, oh, it's just done silent. It's done silent, yes. Everyone needs uh, either to, to hit the bar or the coffee. Yes, William. I, 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 I was just going to sort of h highlight there are some ways in which you can perhaps make the data held on Guernsey more valuable than elsewhere. Um, Gillian Browning sitting in, in the audience so over there and in the paper which she wrote on lending, lending credit and finance in addition to the thing on electronic agents to which you, know, you, you made reference in, in your, your speech earlier. There's a bit about well, well should one regulate the providers of KYC services because if there is a as it were a Guernsey stamp that these people are going to do it particularly well and look after the KYC data in a certain way that it doesn't get corrupted and so forth well maybe that actually can be a positive push of helping people this is very much to Emma's points uh, come to Guernsey for KYC uh, central knowledge and by the way you also automate that whole wretchedly expensive uh, KYC process and thus cut the costs of it by using a regulated provider on Guernsey upon whom you can put more alliance than an unregulated provider elsewhere so we as the Commission have yet to make up our mind on whether to go down that route but it's there are some ideas about there in very specific areas of data where you can think given Guernsey's lawmaking power of doing something quite specific and different which might give Guernsey another USP. Um, and if we carry that on to sort of the blockchain um, products, so two blockchain mm. um, products have now been regulated by the GFSC, um, presumably you are not having to go uh, into that date, into the, the whole technology of the blockchain. You are simply looking to regulated financial services providers 
that have selected that as a platform with which to handle the data for that particular business? I, I think it's, it's somewhere in between. I mean, I think as a regulator, we're technology neutral in the same way as if we go out and inspect ABC fiduciary company, we may, during an inspection visit, check to say, see whether they've bothered doing any cybersecurity testing and whether they've actually got up-to-date Microsoft patches on their computers. If somebody comes to us and says, I want to use blockchain for this, this okay with you, we will actually have to know enough, and this is quite a challenge for us, to look at what they're quite they're doing with blockchain saying, is this safe or is this all going to fall over? Is a server farm somewhere in um, Uzbekistan going to suddenly disappear and then you've lost all your client data? So I think we'll, we will ask them some due diligence questions like that, but fundamentally whether it's a blockchain solution or uh, an absolutely normal uh, Microsoft server for holding the data, we're, we're indifferent and we're very open to looking at blockchain solutions, which undoubtedly in some areas, uh, for example, fund valuation can have some distinct advantages. I think there was one more question here, Mariel. Yeah, I just, you just I got a mic. I mean, yeah. Can you just grab a mic there? Sorry. Yeah, I feel like the day started really big and wide and really kind of big and inspiring, and it's kind of gone down to something that feel, almost feels slightly negative and slightly anti at this point. And I just, I'd like to just throw it back a bit wider again and say, what to, to the people on the panel, what do you think Guernsey's role is in terms of some of those bigger ideas? So some of the kind of things that Mark talked about at the beginning of the day, that kind of vision stuff, you know, ra radical changes in healthcare and these kinds of things that have whole new requirements for data sets. I'd just like to just kind of hear this, this, this group of people's reactions yeah. to some of that and what it might mean for Guernsey. I, I, it's, it's a great question, and, and I hope that we haven't been. I wouldn't like to think you finished the day feeling negative about it, but rather inspired about what Guernsey could deliver on. Um, I mean, I think you've seen a little bit of it today that, that government is talking to industry, is talking to the regulator, is talking to citizen. I mean, we, the fact that we're all sitting here talking about this stuff is, in and of itself, really exciting. And I think we should leave thinking that and be proud of that and grateful to those that organised it. Um, there are huge benefits to be had, um, but as I think every speaker has said, there are, there are risks, and I think if we intelligently understand those risks, it's not being Luddite, it's not saying big data has to be filed and collect dust and we never do it. Um, it's we do it with our eyes open, and we do it with respect for the human beings that actually sit behind all of that, and I think we can do that, but you need government vision, you need underpinning of good legislation, you need independent regulators, you need citizens that are engaged, you need industry that understand the value of complying in and of itself, not just because the regulator is sitting there about to find them. They understand that it adds value to their brand, it encourages trust from clients who are more likely then to go back and do business with them. It's all of those things. So I personally think it's a wonderful opportunity for a small jurisdiction, and I want to have conversations with government and with industry about how we do it even better. I think I'd like to see us positioned at being the high, the high end of the spectrum on this. As Lord Turner remarked after the last financial crisis, not all financial innovations are good innovations. For example, that little app you downloaded onto your smartphone by accident this morning, um, which wonderfully transfers all the money from your bank account into my bank account, is not necessarily an innovation, an innovation which you would wish to see being deployed in Guernsey. And that is very much where I'm, I'm coming from. I want to see us be a center where the right sort of big data is done in the right way, not the sort of big data which comes three or four years' time we will have the European Commission coming down and saying, why are you doing that in Guernsey? Black box for you, and we'll do A, B, and C to you because you've allowed big data to be used in that way. And I think we need to be very conscious of the international context, the multinational context, and making sure that we are positioning ourselves in the right way there. I, actually, I, echo, I, I do echo Emma, but also William. I think right now, absolutely, it's there for the taking for, for Guernsey. I've been mightily impressed with what I've heard uh, about the industries that are here currently that are using big data. I think it's fantastic. It's uh, um, I might have to go and, uh, go and see swappers and see if I can swap my house and come back here. Um, just because I think you should all be very excited about what is going on on the island. I think it is, it is hugely healthy. Um, I echo Emma, actually. The fact that you are, we are here and we're talking about it means that actually all of us think that it is very ex exciting but also very important that it's got it's right and it's done in the right way and I echo William with GDPR and with the European Data Protection Board 
certainly when I'm in the Isle of Man, I'm telling clients in the Isle of Man that you know if this is a whole new regime and this is money val, but with data instead of you know instead of with uh, KYC and AM, AML and CFT. And so if, uh, like William says, if we if we allow somebody in that misbehaves and gets it wrong, then absolutely the reputation on the island is is on the line and. Nobody really, I think, in this in this room wants that to, to to be the case. But absolutely, I think this is a very exciting time, and I think this is just the cusp of of. For me, I think for the offshore financial centres, this is a, a you know this is a new income stream. This is a new business. This is offshore data centres, and I think we all have the ability in the three crown dependencies to absolutely lead the way. Um, uh, and and I hope that we do it. In, in principle, we can do any and all of those things, but we must remember, um, do no harm, understand the Hippocratic Oath. And just because you don't intend to do harm doesn't mean that harm won't result if you're not careful and if these things are not fleshed out and thought about. Um, and so whilst um, all of those visions were tremendously exciting, they are exciting, um, and there are things there uh, that we definitely could and should be thinking and talking about doing. Um, we do need to uh, be mindful as we're going down that road that lots of interests um, are potentially engaged, not just for us, but for other people elsewhere in the world. And if we lose our reputation, we will never get it back. So we, we must proceed with due caution, but that doesn't mean we have to put a brake on, on innovation and development. I guess from my perspective, what's been fascinating about the day and sort of the, uh, the, the, the journey of the day has been um, there, was a, there was quite a lot of vision at the beginning of the day. And I think we're almost coming down to the nuts and bolts of we have these amazing platforms, we're having these conversations, um, but it's now to business. We've built the platform, we have world leading um, uh, legislation here, and we have the ability to be nimble with that. So now the innovation needs to come from business. Um, and business also needs to engage with the next generation of business to make sure that we're skilled up to take advantage of those innovations in a way. Um, so I, I think that sort of almost neatly sums up the day.